Okay, this is going to be example two, finding a potential for a conservative vector field. And again, just a potential is a, a scalar function, little f, so that the gradient of it um, equals our vector field. So in this case, suppose we have the vector field given by 6xy plus 4z squared i, 3x squared plus uh, 3y squared j, and then 8xz k. Um, so again, our vector field, then simply, we can just rewrite that as 6xy plus 4z squared, 3x squared plus 3y squared, and 8xz. So again, what we need is, we need a little function f. We need f so that the partial of that with respect to x will be the first component. 6xy plus 4z squared. The partial with respect to y of that has to equal the 3x squared plus 3y squared portion. And the partial with respect to z would have to equal 8xz. Okay, so again, you can start with any one of these three that you want. Um, maybe the partial with respect to z would be most simple, but um, I'm going to start with the partial with respect to x. If we in since we took the derivative of f with respect to x, if we integrate that function with respect to x, 6xy plus 4z squared, if we integrate that with respect to x, remembering to treat the y and the z as constants, we'll get 3x squared y, again if we integrate the 6x portion, that'll get, give us our 3x squared, and then we would get 4, we need to insert an x, so we'd have 4xz squared, but then the idea is, since we integrated with respect to x, we could have had some function of y and z also hanging out. Because again, if I take the derivative of this function with respect to x, it doesn't matter what the function is. Um, in terms of y and z. When we take the derivative of that, since it doesn't involve x, it would just simply equal 0, and we, we would get this f of x portion back. So we know that our scalar f, uh, our scalar function f, has to satisfy that condition. Okay, well, let's see. What I'm going to do now is simply, so I'm going to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, Okay, so if I take the partial of this function with respect to y, we would simply get 3x squared. Notice the middle term has no y terms in it, um, so that would simply be 0. And then we're going to take the derivative of this function um, with respect to y. So notationally, we just write the partial of h with respect to y of yz. And again, the idea is now we simply equate partial derivatives. We've got f of y equals 3x squared plus 3y squared. This says f of y has to be 3x squared plus this h, the, the derivative of h with respect to y. Well, it says simply that these two respective pieces must be equal by setting, them, um, by setting the partials equal to each other. Okay, so really we know that the partial with respect to y would have to be 3x squared um, plus 3y squared, which again we're saying is 3x squared plus the partial of h with respect to y of yz. So again, we really know that our h of y that simply has to equal 3y squared. And now we're going to do the same trick. We're going to integrate this thing with respect to y. Okay, so we've got h of y is 3y squared. If we integrate that now with respect to y, again, remembering that this is a function, um, could have been a function in terms of y and z. So it says if we integrate that with respect to y, it says we'll simply get y cubed. But again, we could have had some function of z remaining. OK, 
Okay. Again, the idea is if I take the derivative of this, so let me see, let me insert that back in there. So now we know that our original function f has to satisfy 3x squared y plus 4xz squared. And again, it says um, this original function, this would have been h of yz after we integrate, it says that's going to give us y cubed plus maybe some function of z remaining. Okay. Notice again, if you take the partial of this function with respect to x, we will get the 6xy plus 4z squared. If we take the partial with respect to y, we would simply get the um, 3x squared plus 3y squared portion. And now we're going to use our partial with respect to z. If I take the derivative of the scalar function now with respect to z, If we take the derivative of that, the first term simply goes away. The second term would be 8xz. The y cubed portion would go away. And then we would simply get the derivative of g, which is going to be g prime of z in this case. If we set this equal to our partial derivative with respect to z that we originally had, we said that that was 8xz. Well, that simply says then that g prime of z would have to equal 0. And if we integrate that function, that is 0, if we integrate that with respect to z, we'll simply get a constant. OK, so it looks like our potential function, or a potential function, a nice general potential function, would be the function 3x squared y plus 4xz squared plus y cubed plus c. Okay, and you can take the partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z, and see that you do get each of the respective components back. So again, the basic idea of what you're doing is you're taking one of the partials you're integrating with respect to x. That's what I did in the first one, at least. Obviously, if you take the partial with respect to y, you would integrate with respect to y first. The, 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 the idea is, though, when you integrate, you don't just pick up an arbitrary constant. You pick up an arbitrary constant in terms of the other two variables. You then have to take partials of that, um, compare it to the original um, components of the vector field, and then you use those to kind of keep backtracking, and, and you figure out exactly that, that function that's in terms of the other two variables, you find out more information about it until you're allowed to deduce it exactly. Okay, so again, I think these are definitely confusing problems. Um, I know I was confused when I first saw this with all the, you know, the integral and then the derivatives and what are you setting equal and which, you know, what am I integrating with respect to and the function is, you know, in, defined in terms of what variables. I think definitely confusing stuff, but, um, you know, work through a couple, really think about, you know, what, what derivatives, what partial derivatives you're taking. Um, think about, you know, the functions, what variables they're defined in terms of, and I think that'll help you. Eventually, you, I think you'll, you'll see what's going on. So, again, confusing stuff, but as always, feel free to post comments or questions. Hopefully me or somebody else can point you in the right direction out there.